and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But, Daddy, you shouldn't have done it without consulting Henry or me. My dear, there was so little time. The wedding invitations were in the hands of the printer. I only just cancelled them in time. But how did you know that we wouldn't want to go on with the wedding? But surely... Oh, I know what you're going to say. Respect to Mr. Jekyll. What will people say and all the rest of it? We could have been married very quietly without any fuss. And no one would have thought any the worse of us. Well, my dear, you can still do that if you want to. But you're hoping we won't. Oh, Daddy, I wish you didn't feel the way you do about my marrying Henry. It makes me frightened somehow. In what way, dear? I know you're the best and dearest person in the world, and you'd do anything for my happiness. The fact that you're so opposed to Henry makes me wonder sometimes. Wonder what? If there may not be something against him after all. Margaret, dear, I feel that I'm playing false with the son of my dear old friend, Edward Jekyll, when I say these things against him. But a good father doesn't necessarily mean a good son. And there's something about Henry that has always filled me with uneasiness. Yes, but what? You never have anything definite. It's only a kind of instinct. I think it dates from a time when you were both children. Do you remember the time, one Christmas day, when you and he had a quarrel? It was over a doll, I think. You wanted to play with it, and he wanted you to go riding on his new sledge with him. Yes, I remember. I slipped or something and and fell down some steps. That's a charitable way of putting it. In reality, he pushed you down. His father and I happened to be watching through a window, and we saw the whole thing. I also saw his face when he did it. What do you mean? The blow on your head has made you forget it, but I haven't. I remember all too well. But what? What do you remember? The look on his face. It wasn't the expression of a child. It was that of a fiend. Of what? Daddy, you can't be serious. Indeed, I am. And that night his father and I had a long talk about it. He told me then of certain misgivings he had about the boy. From that time on, I've dreaded to see the growing attachment that has developed between you. Because you saw him lose his temper. You know me better than to think I'd pay any attention to so small a thing as that. Well, what else then? There was a story about uh, something that happened while he was still at college. One of his friends... A boy named David Markham got into some sort of disgrace. No one knows really what happened. But while Henry was in the room with him, it was a room high up in a tower, young Markham either threw himself or fell out of the window and was killed. Daddy, you're... You're not suggesting that Henry had anything to do with that. There was another boy there, son of a client of mine, who said that Henry had been particularly intimate with Markham and had actually been involved in the same escapade that got him expelled. There was no proof of it, and Henry, of course, went scot-free. What was the escapade? According to my client, something to do with two village girls. No, I'll not believe it. It isn't possible. My dear, I'd do anything to spare you this, but you've asked me why I oppose your marriage to Henry. These are my reasons. Well, suppose it is true. That was years ago... Henry might have been tempted. Who are we to judge him? But what about the rest of his life? Doesn't that make up for it? All the wonderful things he's done for sick people, his clinic, his work at the laboratory. You saw that article about him in the science magazine. He's not yet 30, and he's made some discoveries that'll transform modern medicine. For all I know, Margaret, dear, Henry may be a genius. But even a genius would not find forgiveness in my eyes if he caused you any harm. Harm? But how could he? Don't you understand that he loves me? But not enough to give up his association with a man whom I've reason to believe is evil enough to overcome all that is best in Henry Jekyll and reduce him to a level similar to his own. And that is lower than the beast. Who are you talking about? A man named Edward Hyde. Has he ever spoken to you about him? No, never. Who is he? I don't know. But before you marry Henry, 
I'm going to make it my business to find out. Henry. Oh, my poor darling. You don't know how good it is to see you, Margaret. Somehow, I was afraid you wouldn't be here. But why? Surely of all times now... When one has had the terrible, unexpected blow, one distrusts everything. But not me, surely. Not you, dear. But there might have been something else to keep you away from me. Nothing. There's nothing on this earth that could ever do that. As long as I feel you want me. I'll want you always. No matter what happens or where I am. Will you remember that, sweet? Keep on telling me. You don't know how I love to hear it. Is it true what Hugh Lanyon told me about your father putting off our wedding? He thought he was doing what you would wish, Henry. Not he. He was doing what he wished. Father's death gave him an utterly unhoped for excuse. Henry, dear, you mustn't feel that way about him. He's given his consent. He told me that there's nothing to prevent us getting married quietly, even now if we want to. And do you want to? Yes, if... If you want it that way. Never mind about me. How do you feel? Will you marry me now, right away? Or would you rather wait and have your wedding in a church? With bridesmaids and choral service and all the rest of the pomp and ceremony. Oh, Henry, darling, you know I don't care a bit for all that. No, oh, but you hesitated. You said if I wanted it that way. Don't you want to get married now? Can't we talk about it a little later on? You've just come from that long train journey and... No, I want to know just exactly how you feel. I wasn't wrong in feeling uneasy about you. There is something that's keeping you away from me. Oh, darling, that's nonsense. Oh, no, it's not. I've got a peculiar instinct for these things. There's something at the back of your mind. I can sense it. And I'm never wrong. Now, tell me. Tell me what it is, Margaret. I'm not going to let you worry yourself over nothing. You look dreadfully tired and not a bit well... Did you sleep on the train? I've hardly slept for nights. Then you must get some rest now. After that, we'll talk. Do you think I'll be able to rest until I know? What's troubling you, Margaret? You've got to tell me. Please, dear. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Ah, then there is a molehill. You said there was nothing. There is nothing. A pack of stories which I don't believe. What kind of stories? Oh, ridiculous nonsense about someone who, who fell out of a window when you were at school. What? Who told you that? Oh, never mind. It's not important. Not important? Margaret, I've got to know. But why? I told you I didn't believe it. Whoever told you is trying to turn you against me. What else did you hear? Nothing. Yes, there is something. Henry... Why do you look like that? There's no need to get so angry. Isn't there? You think I should feel nothing about the person who's trying to take you away from me? But they haven't. Uh, yet there's just that shade of doubt that makes you hesitate about marrying me. The poison's beginning to work. How can you say such a thing? I don't care what anybody says about you. What have they been saying? It was your father, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I guessed it. And yet you say he's not trying to prevent our marriage. If he doesn't think you'll make me happy, can you blame him? No. No, I... I can't blame him. But I can hate him. Oh, don't talk that way. You're the two people I love best in all the world. Don't you know how unhappy it makes me feel when I know that you're hostile to each other? Poor little sweet. Unhappiness already. And not even married to me. He doesn't ask very much of you, Henry. What does he ask? Just... Just that you should give up your friendship with this man, Hyde. Hyde? He told you of Hyde? Yes, he did. What did he say? He... He said he was lower than the beast. And evil enough to overcome all that is best in you and... And make you like himself. Did he tell you anything else about him? No, nothing. Who is he, Henry? He's a man I, 
I've used to help me in some of my scientific experiments. There. I knew there was some perfectly good explanation. Will you be needing him much longer? That depends. On what? On you, Margaret. I... I don't understand. The day you marry me, my need of Hyde will cease. Well, what a strange thing to say. What have I got to do with Hyde? Nothing. You're as far apart as the moon from the earth. And yet his fate lies in your hands. You have the power to exercise him to set his evil soul at rest forever. Or send it out into the world to ravage and despoil like a creature out of hell itself. Henry, you frighten me. You look so strange. And you're thinking once again that perhaps your father was right. How do I know unless I've seen this man? You have seen him. When? The night my mother died. Don't you remember? You... You mean that... That awful little man I saw out near your laboratory? Yes. That's the one. But, Henry, he's horrible, dreadful. How could you bear to have him near you? Oh, you'll have to send him away. He is evil. Think what happened just by having him there that night. Yes, because of him, my mother died. Oh, don't say that. But it's the truth. Don't think the knowledge hasn't haunted me ever since. And now my father. Perhaps if it wasn't for Hyde, they'd both be alive today. Then send him away. Get rid of him before he does us any more harm. Oh, promise me you will. Then you'll marry me. The day you come and tell me that you've sent Hyde away forever, I'll marry you. Then we'll go back to London tomorrow. Have you had enough of Paris? More than enough. I, too. I want to get back to work, to the clinic, to the hospitals. It's only in work, good, hard, ceaseless work, that we can lose ourselves. And lose the Edward Hydes. And lose the Edward Hydes. You don't know how right you are, Margaret. The Edward Hydes in our cells. Mm -hmm.